to you and let us begin with our call to worship those who love God those who know God by name God will protect those who call out to God God will answer we gather this morning those who trust God amen as you're able would you now please stand for our hymn of praise ask me not And ask me not to gentle say, oh yes, hear my humble cry. us by. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I stand before you this morning, God, with a humble heart, God, just to say thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, for your grace, God, and I thank you for your mercy, God. Lord, we came into your sanctuary this morning, God, not out of form or fashion, God, but we came, God, to give you the glory, God. Allow your Holy Spirit to fall fresh in this place this morning. Allow your Holy Spirit, God, to move from line to line and home to home, God. God, whatever we may be carrying, God, that's distracting us, God. I'm asking you, God, in the name of Jesus to allow us to feel your 
your peace, God. Your peace that surpasses all understanding, God. The peace that Jesus left us when he left God. You promised us, God, that that peace would guard our hearts and our minds, God. Lord, don't allow us to just go through the motions this morning, God. Allow us to open up our hearts and invite you in. I'm asking you, God, to allow your glory cloud to fill Wesley this morning in the name of Jesus. As we honor one of your servants, God, that you placed in the bed, God, even though she couldn't be with us, She's watching God, and I thank you, God, for raining down your healing power in the name of Jesus. Lord, because you told us that if we just ask God in your son, Jesus' name, God, and we believe you would do. Lord, I thank you, God, for a ship in the atmosphere in the name of Jesus. Allow your spirit to stir up this morning, God. Let us know that it's not about us. It's about your glory, God. Move us out of your way, God. Hide us behind the cross, God, so that your spirit can minister this morning in the name of Jesus. Your spirit can minister through song, God. Your spirit can minister through word, God. Have your way this morning, God. Wesley is moving out of your way this morning in the name of Jesus. God, I just thank you, God. I give you all honor, glory, and praise God for you are so worthy, God. Thank you for the breath that you breathe in our nostrils for us to praise you, God. In Jesus' precious body and holy name, I pray. We all say together, amen. Son has spied on me. He has set me free. Oh, God has, yes, he has, smiled on me. Yes, he has, he's been good to me. God has smiled. Set me free. God has smiled on me. Yes, He has. He's been good. Yes, He has. He's been good. He's been good. Yes, He has. He's been good. And now, as you're able, would you now stand for our affirmation of faith, 881, the Apostles' Creed, the traditional version, and following that, our doxology and a special solo by Mrs. Betsy Bates and our presentation from Mrs. Thelma Hudson. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus, Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered on the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He lived in the heaven. And, and sitting there the mighty hand of God, the Father Almighty, the mighty of God, the generous, the quick, and the bad. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic, Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the giving of saints, the resurrection of the life, and the life of Amen. Amen. Amen.
you may be seated. I'm so glad to be here on this time. Um, the song that I'm going to sing. I've had some good days, and I've had some hills to climb I've had some weary days and some sleepless nights but when I I look around Things over all of my good days outweigh my bad days. I I won't complain. Sometimes my clouds hang low and I can hardly see the road. I ask the question, Lord, why so much pain? But he knows what's best for me. Although my weary eyes, they can't see. And so I'll say, thank you, Lord. Can you say that? And so I'll say, thank you, Lord. I, I won't complain. For God is good to me. Yeah, I'm thinking about it. He's been very good to me. More than this world could ever be. Been so good. Been so good to me. He turned all my tears away, and he turned my midnights into days. And so I'll say, thank you, Lord. Can you say that? And so I'll say.
Bora. We say thank you, Pastor, for allowing us to come and take a few minutes to honor such a wonderful woman. This morning, we have the opportunity of honoring Ms. Arlene Bates. Galatians 6 and 9 says, let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. And one thing about Ms. Bates is that she never gave up. Amen. Amen. She was there with us at all times at the meetings. She worked with the Lay Servant Ministries um, Committee for several years. She was on the committee before I came on the committee. And such a wonderful person with compassion. And she would get us straight all the time. She, she would make sure, she, when we went to Zoom, she would say, there's Zoom etiquette. Now, we do not eat and we do not drink on Zoom. So if we had to have breakfast, we would just say, we'll cut off our camera and we have our breakfast. She is, she is the type of person that you love being around because she had, was soft-spoken, but Ms. Bates, when she spoke, she spoke with authority. Yes. She meant what yes. she said, yes. and she would do anything for you if she could. So this morning, I say to her, thank you for the work that you put in with the Lay Servant Ministries of the Walkerburg District. And we have the certificate that she will, is now a Lay Servant Emeritus, meaning that she will never have to take another Lay Servant course as long as she's living, and that she will always be a Lay Servant in the Walterboro District and her church. And for this, we say, this is a certificate presented to Ms. Arlene Bates in recognition as Lay Speaker Emeritus for your unwavering support and dedication to the Lay Servant Ministries of the Walterboro District, presented on this day, September 25th, 2022. And Reverend McDonald and the uh, District Superintendent and Thelma Hudson, Walterboro District Director of Lay Servant Ministries. And we thank you for your service, Ms. Bates. We are so grateful. We are so grateful for her. Thank you all. If you're able, now stand for our Psalter, number 810 in your United Methodist hymnal, Psalm 91, my favorite. We're reading the response? Yes. We will start with our response. Grant, Grant us salvation, salvation, Lord, in Lord, trouble be our refuge. Those who dwell in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, My God, do my trust. For the Lord will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence and will cover you with his pinions. Son of the Lord, Grant, Grant us salvation, Lord, in trouble of our future. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day. Nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wages the evil. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look at and see. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, the most high, your habitation. No evil shall befall you. No glory shall come in your Grant us salvation, Lord, 
in trouble be our refuge. For God will give his angels charge over you to guard you in all your ways. They will Because they cleave to me in love, I will deliver them. I will protect them. When they call to me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. I will set it by them. Grant us salvation, Lord. In trouble, be our refuge. Remain standing as our ushers come forward for our offering. You may be seated, and now our musical musical selection, The Lord is My Light. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light. And my salvation, whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? Shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I fear? In the time In the time of trouble, he shall hide me. In the time of trouble, he shall hide me. Who shall I
and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Our scripture lessons will be coming from the Old Testament, Jeremiah 30, the 32nd chapter, verses 1 through 3, 6 through 15, and in your pew Bible, you can find it on 1077. And our New Testament reading comes from Luke chapter 16, verses 19 through 31. And you can find that in your few Bible, 1,424. Our Old Testament reading, Jeremiah 32, verses 1 through 3, and then 6 through 15. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord in the 10th year of Zedekiah, king of Judah, which was the, the 18th year of Nebuchadnezzar. For then the king of Babylon's army besieged Jerusalem and Jeremiah the prophet was shut up in the court of the prison, which was in the king of Judah's house. For Zedekiah, king of Judah, had shut him up, saying, Therefore thou thy prophesy and say, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will give this city into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall take it. Verse 6, And Jeremiah said, The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Behold, Hanamiel, the son of Shalom, Thine uncle shall come unto thee, saying, Buy thee my field that is in Anna, for the right of redemption is thine to buy it. So Hanamiel, mine uncle's son, came to me in the court of the prison, according to the word of the Lord, and said unto me, Buy my field, I pray thee, that is in Anna, which is in the country of Benjamin, for the right of inheritance is thine, and the redemption is thine. Buy it for thyself. Then I knew that this was the word of the Lord. And I bought the field of Hanamiel, my uncle's son that was in Anahoth, and weighed him the money, even 17 shekels of silver. 
And I subscribed the evidence and sealed it and took witnesses and weighed him the money in the balances. So I took the evidence of the purchase, both that which is, was sealed according to the law and custom and that which was open. And I gave the evidence of the purchase unto Barak, the son of Neriah, the son of Messiah, in the sight of Hanamiel, mine, mine uncle's son, and in thy presence of witnesses that subscribed the book of the purchase before all the Jews that sat in the court of the prison. And I charged Barush before him, them, saying, Thus saith the Lord of the host, the God of Israel, take these evidences, this evidence of the purchase, both which is sealed and this evidence which is open, and put them in the earthen vessel that they may continue many days. For thus saith the Lord of hosts and the God of Israel, houses and fields and vineyards shall be possessed again in this land. And now as you're able, would you now stand for the reading of the gospel? Luke, the 16th chapter, verses 19 through 31. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried, and in hell he lift up his eyes, being in, tor in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But he, Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house, for I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham said, said unto them, him, they have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto them, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will, he, will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. I, thus I read Jeremiah chapter 32, verses 1 through 3, 6 through 15, Luke chapter 16, verses 19 through 31. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, the hearers, and the doers of his holy word. After our hymn of preparation, remain standing. Lord, help me to hold out the next voice you hear will be that of our pastor, Pastor Tracy. Oh, help me to hold out. But I'm begging you, Lord. Oh, oh, yes, help me to hold out. Oh, I'm begging you now, Lord. Help me to hold out. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, tell my change. Oh, 
I'm begging you now. Oh, please, Jesus, help me to fall down. Oh, I'm just about to make it over, Lord. Oh, and I need a little help. Help me to fall down. Oh, I'm asking you now, Lord. Help me to fall down. Oh, please, Jesus, until, 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 just come, listen here, my way may not be easy, you cannot say that it would be, but if it gets dark, I can't see my way, you told me to put my trust in me. That's why I'm asking you now, Lord. Oh, yes, Jesus, help me to hold down. Oh, I'm just about to make it over, Lord. I need a little help. Help me to hold down. Oh, I'm asking you now, Lord. Please help me to hold down. Hey, hey, hey. Until I take it gone. Until I take it gone. Until I take Help me to hold out until my changes come. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come before your throne once again, God, just to say thank you, God. Lord, as we prepare, God, to hear a word from on high, I thank you, God, that deaf ears have been opened, God. Scales are going to fall from our eyes this morning in the name of Jesus. Lord, we're not going to leave here the way that we came in. God. Lord, I thank you, God, for doing a heart circumcision this morning, God. Lord, I thank you, God, that you prepared, God, the ground in advance, God, that this word is going to fall on good ground, that somebody that's lost, God, may cry out, I yield, I yield, I just can't hold out any longer. God, those of us who might think we can see God, you're going to do a circumcision on our heart and speak to us in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you, God, that you're hiding me way down behind your cross, God. Don't even allow us to see the messenger, God, but hear the message, God. Let your word cut this morning like a two-edged sword, God. Let it be the mirror, God, that we look in this morning, God. Lord, I thank you, God, for being my rock, God, my redeemer, my strength, my comfort, and my peace. And it's in Jesus' precious, mighty, and holy name I pray. Amen. I'm going to ask you to turn with me to 1 Corinthians. It can be found in your pew Bible on page 1558, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And those of you in the sanctuary, and even if you're at home, I'm going to ask you to stand up if you're able and give reverence to the reading of God's holy word. 1 Corinthians, pew Bible, 1558. And I read from my study Bible when the Holy Spirit leads me to do that. Because a lot of times we may know the word, but he wants us to understand it so we can apply it because even Satan knew the word. Amen? So he wants us to be able to apply it. We'll begin reading at verse 26. I still hear pages. I'm going to wait on you. All we have is the word this morning. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, beginning at the 26th verse. Brothers and sisters, 
Think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. Verse 28 says, God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus who has become for us wisdom from God, that is, our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Verse 31 says, Therefore, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. The word of God for the people of God. God. You may be seated. And just for a little while, as long as the Holy Spirit wants to minister to us. The Holy Spirit wants to minister to us this morning from the sermon topic. God can use you too. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Neighbor. Oh, neighbor. God can use you too. And as we're honoring Miss Bates this morning, she knew and recognized a long time ago that God could use her. And she began her work. And when I came over, she was doing a lot of work in a lot of different capacities. And she is truly Miss now, Wesley. Amen? Because Miss Bates didn't say that, oh, that's not my job. I can't do that. She didn't say, I'm not going to be over here. That's your job, Sister Crystal, so I'm going to let you do it. She helped out church wherever she could. See, but so many times we figure God can't use us. I don't know who the Holy Spirit is ministering to, but God has been tugging at somebody's heart. He has been calling you by name, and yet you have not answered that call. Because you have not answered it, the Holy Spirit helped me to understand that you have not answered it because the church, the body of Christ, the world has put stipulations on people. See, we can't clean ourselves up. We minister to too many people that says, I got to stop drinking first. I got to stop smoking first. I have to stop doing this. No, you come to Christ and Christ is going to clean you from the inside out because he even has a gift on the inside of you. It doesn't matter what you did yesterday. It doesn't matter what you did last week. Once you repent, your slate is clean. But see, Wesley, I need you to understand this morning that the unchurch is looking at us, the body of Christ. And when we're not showing love, when we're treating each other any kind of way, we cannot bring people to Christ like that. The Holy Spirit sent me to tell somebody this morning, stop thinking about it and just do it. Stop thinking about it and answer the call. He want me to tell you that he can use ordinary to do extraordinary. The word says he speaks, he picks the lowly, the people that the world doesn't think is wise. Amen, somebody. We're going to give you some examples from the Bible in just a few minutes. God doesn't care about your degrees. He doesn't care about your bank accounts. He has already placed on the inside whom he calls, he also equips. Mm. Somebody is saying, who am I? I'm not special. God can't use me. Look what I've been doing all my life. I've been cheating and stealing and lying. God can't use me. Yes, he can. Once you acknowledge you're wrong and you say, God, here am I. I surrender all. God can use you too. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God is looking for a few good soldiers. Doesn't the Marines say that? A few good men? Yes. God is looking for a few good soldiers to be on the battlefield this morning. 
a few good soldiers that's going to stand up even when it gets tough. Yes. A few good soldiers that's not going to go AWOL when the fire begins to get too hot. Yes. A few good soldiers that say, I'm going to stand. My feet are going to be steadfast and unmovable. I don't care what you say about me. I don't care how you treat me. God can use me too. Yeah, yes, he can. How many of you know that God is God alone? How many of you know that he sits high and he looks low? How many of you know that he's all over the place at the same time? How many of you know that God has placed a work on the inside of you? If you don't believe it, just go over to Corinthians and read about the spiritual gifts. You see, when people hear ministry, they automatically think about preaching. But the ministry starts way before you can even come and hear the word. Amen, somebody. The ministry starts when we go out these doors and go out into the vineyard and we'll be able to minister and lead other people to Christ. How many of you know ministry comes in different forms? Singing can be your ministry like Sister Bessie. She blessed my soul this morning. Cooking can be your ministry like Sister Louise back there. Caring for the sick could be your ministry. Working with the youth could be your ministry. Church, there are so different, many different types of ministries that yeah. needs to be yeah. done in the body of Christ. Whatever your ministry is, you should be about your father's business. Amen. Amen. You should be doing it to the glory of God. It's not about the pastor. Amen. Because the pastor don't have a heaven or a hell to put you in. So when you show up, you ain't showing up for the body of Christ. You ain't showing up for Wesley. You showing up for God. So when you decide to sit down, you're sitting down on God. What do we mean when we say ordinary? I looked it up in the dictionary. Ordinary means regular or customary. Something you used to. How many of you know about the comfort zone? Pastor, we always did it like this. We ain't going to change. But I serve a God of increase. And God can't increase you if you don't want to move. God can't order your steps if you don't move. You praying, God, give me this. God, do this. No, I ain't doing that, Pastor. What you thinking about? You done lost your mind. No, I'm following Christ. You can either come with me or you can get left. When we add five little letters in the front, E-X-T-R-A, it goes from being ordinary to extraordinary. (laughs) Just like when you come to Christ, You're no longer ordinary. It becomes new. Remember the Bible says former things have passed away. All things become new. So if we've become new, why are we trying to still do the same old stuff? Hallelujah, somebody. Amen, Amen. Amen. chandeliers. He told me that my former is behind me. That my greater is before me. All I have to do is listen to what the Holy Spirit is telling me to do and be obedient and follow Christ. Too many of us trying to follow man and not follow Christ. When we look at this passage of scripture, we see that God is nothing like society. God is nothing like this world. God, the rich and famous is here in the world. And many people are here. These are the people God is looking for. Because when you're here, and don't hear me say that God don't want you to have nothing because he's going to bless you. Remember, he will open up the windows of heaven once you bring that 10%, bring the tithe, the offering to the storehouse. He's going to open up the windows and pour you out a blessing. You won't have room to receive. But how many of you have hit rock bottom when you couldn't call on nobody but God? How many of you been on rock bottom? See, when you're on the bottom, it, it humbles you. Amen, somebody? Amen. Amen. See, God is looking for that humility. When you're humble, God can use you. But once he starts elevating us, church, we cannot let that go to our head. Oh, they said I preached good yesterday. No, to God be the glory. Amen. Oh, they said I said good yesterday. No, to God be the glory. I'm just a vessel that God is using to minister to others. Yeah. Think about it. And let's look at verse 27. 
But God choose the foolish things of the world. The people we don't even want to deal with. And I'm not talking to nobody in here. But when somebody comes in Wesley that looks different from us, they may not dress like us. They may have on dirty clothes. They may be homeless. Are we going to bring them up front or are we going to sit them in the back? Are we going to be so busy looking at them and judging them? We got to learn how to be witnesses and not judges, church. Too many of the churches now become judges instead of witnesses. It doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter how much you have. God can use us to witness to other people. God can use you too. Amen. Mm. God can only use those that want to be used. Amen. You don't have to have the money. He's going to bless you. Skill and wisdom does not get a person in heaven. Amen. Simple faith does. Skill and wisdom do not get a person in God's kingdom. Let me say that again. Simple faith does. Amen. Well, Pastor, why is it just about faith? Because nobody can boss, boast and say that they did this and they did that. And I want you to do this. The Holy Spirit is having me share this. Do this this week when you talk to people. Because the Holy Spirit had me start doing this a long time ago. See how many times you hear the word I and me. I did this. No, you didn't. The power that's working through you. God's power. Me, 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 I, 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 that's not what God is looking for. Ephesians 3 and 20 tells us, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we asked or imagined, listen at this, according to his power, somebody say his power. Oh. It has nothing to do with you and I. It's his power that worketh within us. Church, God is able for all. We will it. God is calling you. God is calling you. Been calling you for a long time. Last week he told us just answer the call. He's calling you. You hear that small still voice in the midnight hour. That's God calling you. When you wake up 3 o'clock in the morning and try to figure out why you can't go back to sleep, that's God calling you. Yeah. We have to be like Samuel and say, your servant is listening. Yeah. Speak, Lord. Yeah. See, God will take what the world sees as junk and make it a jewel. Are you willing to become a jewel this morning? How many of you know that a diamond is made out of coal under the pressure of the earth? Sometimes we got to be pressed for our all to flow. Anybody ready to become a diamond this morning? I need to let somebody know that God can use you too. From the beginning, God has chosen ordinary people. And he's going to tell us about a few and we're going to move on. Moses came from tending sheep to leading the Israelites out. Mm -hmm. Daniel came out of slavery and captivity in Babylon and became the godly assistant to the king of Babylon. Mm -hmm. Look at Mary. Mm. Mary would have never been chosen in her culture in her time as a mm -hmm. peasant girl. But God chose her to carry the Messiah that saved you, 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 and I when he hung on the cross of Calvary. Yes. So don't listen at what society is telling you. Turn off the TV that's telling you you're nobody. Listen at the word of God. Bury yourself in the word of God and begin to meditate on the word of God. And you don't have to know the whole Bible. Somebody will pull you under their wing and teach you. Get that one scripture. And begin to meditate on it as you grow in the word of God. But God can use you too. I don't know who the Holy Spirit is talking to who has that doubt. But stop doubting. Because God can use you too. And this wasn't supposed to be a shouting message. Because the harvest is plentiful. But the labors are few. God can use you. Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You don't know Christ as your personal. 
That's where you begin. You step out of faith. Lord, I've tried everything else, God. I want to try you now. I've heard about a man named Jesus. And I want to get connected to the true God. Will there be one? Step out of faith this morning. And if you're on WebEx, reach out to us this morning. You can call at 843-599-3786. Call so I can lead you to Christ. If you're in a back state, slidden state, and I don't know why the Holy Spirit has been keeping me here, but God still loves you. It's time to come home. The forgiven God is waiting with his arms open wide. Won't you come? The altar is open for prayer. If you desire prayer, you may come at the, to the altar at this time. Bless him, Savior. He is worthy to be praised. Lord, we thank you this morning. Praise them. We thank you, God, for just being born. Praise them. Lord, we thank you, God, for looking beyond us. Praise them. Even when we love us, as us closer to the in this dark, dark world. Lord, thank you, God, for never giving up on us, God. You saw us, God, who we would be, not who we were at the time, God. For that, we say thank you in the name of Jesus. Lord, I lift up all the sick and shed in this God. Thank you, God, for this much for me. In the name of Jesus, saturate from the crown of their heads, God, of their feet, of Jesus. Glory. Lord, I draw all this closer together. Your body of Christ, God, since we know all the knowledge of God, and all draw us closer. Yes, Lord, I thank you for Miss Betty's God and placing her in this place in the name of Jesus. Lord, I give you honor of my heaven. But I give you even greater glory, God, for how she used those gifts in the name of Jesus. For every life that she's touched, God, for every child that she's trained, God, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, God, for the churches being in the sanctuary this morning, God. Thank you, God, for your healing power in the name of Jesus. Lord, I lift Miss Christine up before you, God. Touch in the name of Jesus. Have your way, God. Move by your power, God. Speak to us and use us. We'll be so careful to always give your name the praise. In Jesus' name I praise. celebration and our pastor's concern.
Good morning, Wesley family and friends. God is so good. We'd certainly like to welcome our visitors here with us today. I know Ms. Hudson stood earlier, but also has someone with her. So if you all would like to stand or say a few words. What? Okay. <laughs> okay. Welcome, and we are certainly happy to have you all with us today. Celebrating birthdays this week, we have Arlene Bates on the 30th and Kennedy Hampton on the 30th. He's on the WebEx. Okay. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. May God bless you. May God bless you. May God bless you. To the Wesley family, we offer the following information regarding the 189th church anniversary. The theme for this year is, Look What God Has Done. Our guest speaker, Reverend James B. Grant II of the Bells Parish, has been confirmed. He and members of the congregation will worship with us. For those who wish to pay early or pay along on their anniversary contribution, you may do so up to Sunday, November 13, 2022. Use the regular offering envelopes and identify your offerings by writing anniversary on the envelope. A segment of the anniversary observance will be dedicated to pastor appreciation. We are grateful to Reverend Glover for a successful first year of leadership. She began her second year with us as of July 1st, 2022 the Anniversary Committee. Okay, and on our bulletin, now we're not looking ahead, there will be no senior choir rehearsal on Wednesday, September 28th. Um, Sunday, October 2nd, 10.30 a.m., Reverend Glover and Wesley Congregation to Carteret Street United Methodist Church Anniversary. Wednesday, October 12th, all charge conference reports are due. Tuesday, November 1st, 6 o'clock p.m., charge conference at the Educational Building. Sunday, November 13th, at 2 o'clock p.m., Wesley United Methodist Church, 189th anniversary. Look what God has done. According to the updated Reset, Restart, Renew best practices for in-person gatherings, anyone present during this worship service should notify the church. Words to encourage evangelism. When God gives me more than I need, I am called to share. And this is from the upper room. Any other announcements? Thank you, and have a blessed week. We're going to do the appreciation. I'm going to get um, someone to help me move this table over. Ms. Bates is watching from home. You have an opportunity to address her, and anything that you have we will put on the table, and we will get it to her after the service. You can come up like you did for the Minister of Music, but instead of her on the front row, 
we are going to put everything on this tape. So I don't know who wants to go first. Make sure you're talking to the mic, and if you look at the camera, you're talking to Miss Bates. Miss Bates, this is Ruby, and this is from the family. But you know you're my road dog, because all the time it's you and me. We, we would go up to Walter Burr all the time. I miss you, and take care of yourself. Good morning, Ms. Bates. This is Augusta Robertson. And I just wanted to say to you and to everyone how much I miss you, how much I love you, how much you mean to me and so many others. And this small gift does not come close to expressing the depth of love that I have in my heart for you. I will continue to see you. You will continue to bless me as you always have, and I wish you Godspeed. Thank you. Ms. Bakes, this, Ms. Bakes, this is William McBride. Especially miss you from the Finance Committee, and this is especially um, a token of my appreciation for all that you do to help Wesley. Good morning, Ms. Bates. This is Laura Carter, your sister in Greekdom. You know how we do that AKA Delta thing. I got a little bit of red and white for you today. I just want to say thank you, thank you, and thank you from the Carter family. Good morning, Ms. Bates. This is Roosevelt McCullough. I want you to know that Wesley wouldn't be where it is today if it wasn't for you. We thank you for all you've done to help us be the church of tomorrow. May God continue to bless you. Good morning, Arlene. I'm going to call you Arlene because you were one of the first persons that I met when, when I moved here in 1984. <laughs> so we've been through several different things together. And as far as the sorority, sister, we were there when we were very small. And we did a lot of things together, a lot of activities here in the church with the children. And I miss you. And I really appreciate you and everything you brought into our lives. Thank you. Good morning, Arlene. Uh, this is from Patty. She sends all of her love and uh, appreciation for all you've done, for hanging with her all these years. And again, I'm waiting for you. We're still holding your place over there in the finance. You've got all your papers waiting for you to come and double and triple check on us, making sure we're doing what we're supposed to do. But thank you so much for taking care, and uh, we will see. We're still looking forward to seeing you soon. Right. Good morning, church. So we stand before you at representing Wesley's kids, and Miss Bates. We just want to say thank you from Wesley's kids. We love you. Um, our kids have grown up here, and you have been instrumental in helping us to guide them, keep them on the right track, and we appreciate and love you. So from Wesley's kids, thank you, Miss Bates. We love you. And Ms. Bates, you know I miss you because you took me under your wing when I got here a year ago, and it, it's a lot different now. 
Wesley's still taking good care of me, though. I'm going to tell you that you trained him well. And I thank you for all that you do. And just a small token of appreciation, a couple of baskets. On behalf of Wesley, some of your favorite things that you like. And a little birdie said you were an AKA. And from visiting you with all your AKA stuff, Fidel time, I'm sorry. Take that out of love, Miss Page. You know I don't know the difference between them. <laughs> and I may have said AKA, but as you can tell, it's the right thing. So there's a cup, a journal, and a t shirt. But Miss Bates, we love you. We love you. We love you. And Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Anyone else have anything else that they'd like to say to Miss Bates family? You have anything you'd like to say? And you need to come get the mic. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Good morning Arlene. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> what y'all don't know, some of you do. Little boy, my mother was very sick. There were a lot of things physically she couldn't do, places she couldn't take me. And Arlene told her, don't worry, I got him. And from here to here, she's always been that mother. Even when my mother was living, she was a mother. When she died, she's still that mother. Arlene was a type lady and still is. If she lived six miles away from someplace, she would leave 40 minutes early. <laughs> I'd say, Arlene, why are you leaving so early? I want to be there on time. Everything has to be in order. And she instilled that in my kids, my grandkids, and myself. So Arlene, I just want to say I love you, always will. The family love you. And I want to thank Wesley. Thank you. That goes from the time from when my mother died, my aunt died, up until now with Arlene's sickness. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you. Thank you. And usually I don't, we go right into benediction, but I do have a couple of things I need to share um, with you. Next Sunday, 925, we will celebrate with Carteret for their church anniversary as a congregation. We will attend the 1030 service where the bishop will be our speaker. So we will be over there. WebEx community, unfortunately, they don't have anywhere you're going to be able to call in. They only live stream on Facebook. So WebEx will not be up next Sunday, but we'll be back the second Sunday here in the sanctuary. We won't be in the sanctuary. We'll be over at Carteret, 1030 next Sunday morning. Miss Christina called and asked me. She's been in the hospital, and she called and asked me to let you know She's with her daughter in Maryland getting some medical attention. And Wesley, she told me to make sure that I tell you all that she loves you so very much. So let's continue to keep her in your prayers. Um, Sister Carmelita and I were able to meet with Reverend Angela Ford Nelson, who is the pastor of New Life. That's where my daughter is attending now. And she had a vision for the youth. So we're going to work together. Um, Doing the body. We're all doing the work of Christ. So we were able to meet on Zoom yesterday, and we're going to meet again next month. But it's pray, plan, and envision for our youth. So I'm asking you to pray for the shalom, and that's peace and healing, over our young people. 
So we're coming together. You have more information coming, but it was such a powerful 30 minute meeting yesterday for our youth. We've got to save our youth from the enemy's hands. The, youth, the enemy is attacking our young people. So we are coming together. It's not about Wesley, not about new life. It's about coming together to be armor bearers for our young people who the enemy is attacking. More information. We have more details coming. And we're going to ask Dr. Omar and the men's choir for our closing selection as our alpha lights come. So long do you have, so long, my friend. May God go Let you away in all your way and through your loving, wiping all until long, that be yours at all. So long to so long, my friend. May God for mercy bless you, my friend. In all your living and through your loving, find the yours alone. Find the yours alone. And again, we thank Miss Priscilla and Miss Thelma for coming, represent the district laity. And we thank Sister Bessie for the beautiful, beautiful selection. Let us look to the hills and be dismissed. Lord, we thank you, God, for your word from on high, God, that we can go out this week and tell somebody God can use you too. We can go out, God, and be ministers in your vineyard, God. Lord, we thank you for stirring up those dormant gifts this morning, God. Now may the love of God, the sweet, sweet, sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth and forevermore. We all sing together. Amen. Amen.